It was very late at night that a distressed woman called the police in a panic. Her daughter was discovered hanging in the closet by the woman, going downstairs quickly, the woman grabbed a knife. After cutting the rope, her husband attempted CPR on his daughter, this is how the 911 call went. Dispatcher, 911. What's your emergency? Christina, my daughter Megan. Dispatcher, what's going on there? Christina, Megan just hung herself. Please get here. Please get here. 13-year-old Megan Taylor Meyer was from Missouri in the United States, she expressed great enthusiasm, Megan, however, always believed she had a problem as she grew older. As a result, she found it difficult to blend in and meet people, she was made to feel excessive by her peers. She was harassed and called dramatic and strange. She was ridiculed for her personality, weight, and the way she spoke, Megan also had academic difficulties, her teachers reported that she was clumsy, throughout class, Megan frequently let her focus stray. And she would become fixated on various novel things that delighted her. So, by the third grade, all of it had driven Megan to consider suicide. Christina, Tina, Meyer and Ronald Meyer, her devoted parents, recognized right away and sought assistance for their daughter. Megan had been dealing with unrecognized mental health problems during that time, she was given an ADD and depression diagnosis primarily as a result of the bullying, which caused her to experience low self-esteem, Sarah Drew was the one friend Megan had, they were in the same class and shared a building. Sarah experienced bullying much like Megan did. For support, the two females leaned on one another. And they became closer together, their families grew to be excellent friends as well, however, Sarah and Megan frequently quarreled before making up. In the ensuing year, Megan expressed to her mother and Sarah her desire to find new acquaintances. The summer before middle school, she expressed her intention that I in addition, Megan wanted to shed her reputation as a freak. She also wished to put an end to bullying. So classes finally began. Megan also made an effort to make friends with the popular students. The girls, however, turned on her. Once more, Megan was the victim of bullying, she was called fat. Whenever she ate, others would make cow noises. Megan pleaded with her parents to send her elsewhere, and they eventually complied, she appeared happier and had a good adjustment to her new school. But Megan and Sarah's bond was disrupted by the change in schools. And with time, their differences widened even more. On the plus side, Megan started meeting new people at school and on the social media platform MySpace. Since the majority of her peers utilized the website, Megan had pleaded with her parents to allow her sign up. She wished not to feel excluded. Megan's mother agreed on the condition that she would keep an eye on all of her posts and messages. Additionally, Christina would have the last say in who Megan may friend on the website. Within a day of creating her account, Megan received a friend request from a boy by the name of Josh Evans. Josh wanted to meet some new friends as well. He was likely to relocate not far from Megan's house, Josh and Megan were about the same age. He added Megan as a friend and wrote in the message that she was very attractive. That was something Megan had never heard anyone say her before, especially from a cute guy like Josh, she experienced a sense of being valued, noticed, and ultimately loved for who she was, Megan pleaded with her mother to let her approve the friend request. Christina looked over Josh's bank statement, seeing nothing suspicious, she concurred, Josh and Megan then began conversing, Josh and Megan shared the same interests. She was the most stunning girl he had ever seen, he told her. Megan was completely smitten with Josh, every day after school, she hurried to see him. She felt happier than she had ever felt. And she continued to improve her life, Josh loved her for who she was, so she stopped caring what other people thought of her, Josh didn't have a phone, therefore Megan and Josh were unable to speak on the phone. Josh abruptly turned on Megan on October 16, 2006. As she approached her 14th birthday, Megan was excited. For the first time in her life, she felt confident inviting her schoolmates and Josh was invited, Josh, however, informed Megan that he no longer wanted to be her friend that he did so since he had heard rumors that Megan was rude to her pals. Then Josh made some of their personal talks on MySpace public. 
Megan had been most exposed in those communications, Megan vented to Josh in a few texts about her friends and her problems. And some of them were sexual. People who commented on the page made disparaging remarks about Megan, Megan sensed the end of the world. She felt mistreated and abandoned, Megan was urged by Christina to close. Megan chose not to, though, as she needed to stand up for herself. So Megan and Josh started using foul language, after that, Josh said, have a miserable rest of your life, and the world would be a better place without you. Megan was in shock. Christina observed that her daughter was really distressed and depressed. But when Christina realized Megan hadn't signed off, she was furious with her. Megan cried as she ran upstairs. Megan's parents eventually noticed that she was speaking too quietly. When the parents returned upstairs, they discovered Megan had hanged herself. Christina dialed 911 while in shock and despair. Megan unfortunately didn't make it. Later that day at the hospital, she passed away. The folks who had been cruel to Megan when she was alive started emailing her family their condolences. I in the meantime, Megan's family investigated the issue. Josh, the youngster who had launched the attacks, had deactivated his account, they also learned. The messages were shown to the police by Christina and Ronald, however, according to the authorities, cyberbullying is not a crime, then, Megan's parents received word from a reliable source that Josh was a fake. Josh Evans was a fictitious account that Lori Drew made, the mother of Sarah Drew, Lori, was a woman in her 30s, she intentionally aimed Josh's profile at Megan. She sought retribution since it hurt her deeply that Megan had ceased being friends with her daughter. So she made the Josh profile with the aid of her employee Ashley. All three of Lori, Sarah, and Ashley typed, read, and observed the correspondence between the fictitious profile and Megan. Megan's death was not Lori's fault, she insisted, Megan had already tried to end her life. And it's not like she fired the shot, Lori and her husband repeatedly knocked on the Meyer family's door requesting to speak, the Meyer family was supported by the entire neighborhood, Lori was shunned by the neighborhood, and her business was shut down. The Meyer's refusal to speak with Lori was documented in a report that she filed, she desired to inform them of her role in their daughter's passing. Then came allegations of harassment, a stone being hurled, and paintball gunfire, people, however, thought Lori was lying and pretending to be the victim. When Megan's story went viral, Lori faced criticism from all corners of the globe, somehow, Lori's name, address, and phone number were made public, online teasing and death threats were directed towards Lori, she had earlier claimed that Megan's internet harassment wasn't all that bad. But now that it was affecting her family, she could no longer bear it, she even attempted to place all the blame on Ashley, one of her employees. Ashley was profoundly impacted by Megan's passing, for the trauma, she sought treatment. She also developed suicidal thoughts, later, Megan's case was dropped because the judges didn't want to make creating a bogus account illegal, Lori then left unharmed, later, lawmakers passed the Megan Meyer Cyberbully Prevention Act, the Megan Meyer Foundation is a non-profit organization that Christina also formed with the goal of eradicating cyberbullying. According to the Megan Meyer Cyberbullying Prevention Act, anyone who uses electronic means to support severe, persistent, and hostile behavior and transmits a communication in interstate or international commerce with the intent to coerce, intimidate, harass, or significantly inflict emotional distress on another person faces criminal penalties. What are your thoughts on the Megan Myers case? I really appreciate your input. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Be a part of the Chris Crime Diaries family and hit the subscribe button now.